This is a video about what happened when I took my homemade remote control jet car to a huge runway to see how fast it would go. Last time out it crashed spectacularly, but it had the potential to go much faster, meaning I was keen to fix it up and push it to the limit at a wider track. So here's how I rebuilt the car with some interesting modifications, what happened when I took it to the runway, and the aftermath, discovering what went wrong again. This vehicle started life as any other electric RC car, but has had quite an interesting life so far. You might have seen my video where I strapped some makeshift aero devices on the car in an attempt to make it go faster around a corner. I made some giant wings and also glued rubber skirts to the underside of the floor to experiment with downforce and ground effect. I also raced the rear of the car to accelerate the air and increase the ground effect, just like modern Formula 1 cars. During the test I had my fair share of accidents as I found the limit of what the car could do. But through pushing to find this limit, I gained a good understanding of the aerodynamics of this car and what worked and what didn't through trial and error. Skipping forward a few months, I took the same chassis and fixed a micro jet turbine to it as another experiment. Although crude, I knew that learning to operate a jet turbine on a small, simple vehicle like this would be really helpful for future projects. I removed the electric motor and other electronics and fitted a fuel tank and mounts for the jet engine. This meant that the car would be entirely powered by the turbine with the wheels freewheeling just like a skateboard. I needed a braking system though, so I hooked up the old drive shafts and hooked them to a central disc brake which could be applied when I wanted to slow down and when I wanted to hold the car stationary as the engine ramped up to idle power. I thought there was some real potential in this car, so I decided to develop the car a little further by fitting it with an aerodynamic body and large rear fins to make the car more stable in a straight line. Then I took it to a racetrack with some really long straights. Here I spent the day slowly notching up the speed until I approached the 100 miles an hour mark. I was really impressed with how the car performed, despite its short wheelbase and high centre of gravity. For a car really thrown together over just a couple of weeks, it was doing pretty well at not instantly disintegrating or bursting into flames. I achieved a total speed of 118 miles an hour before I ended the day by running out of skill and ending up on the grass. I enjoyed that coming towards oh, me. <laughs> At least I'd learned a lot and the car had proved itself. Thankfully the car and the engine weren't damaged too badly. I made sure to carefully inspect and clean the engine as these are super high tolerance things as you might expect, but this one is actually extremely strong as it turned out. The only damage was to the thrust tube which I fixed using some precision tools. Now I can set my sights on a new goal of getting this prototype jet car to the UK's biggest RC speed event. If I could rebuild the car in time with a few changes and improvements, I'd have access to a gigantic runway. So what did I change on the car during the rebuild? I had quite a tight turnaround to get everything ready for the event, so I set to work by fitting a brand new shell to the car, which was the exact same body as the one I'd used before. This time though, I mounted this shell a bit lower down on the chassis. This meant I could lower the engine as well and therefore the overall CG or centre of gravity of the car to improve stability. This is how high the engine was on the original towers, which do look a bit ridiculous now. So I printed out some new mounts which were a bit shorter. I didn't want to change too much on the car as otherwise I'd introduce too many unknowns into the mix, but I was keen to add some improvements to the car and things that you'd told me in the comments that you'd like to see. I also got help from a few of my viewers. This is Michael Stallone, another YouTuber who gave me some suggestions for how to set up my suspension. This involves stiffening them with short lengths of fuel tubing. Cool man, thanks very much. <laughs> one thing everyone wanted to see me use after the last video was a gyro, so I decided I would try one out this time. A gyro corrects the wheels automatically, it senses the direction of the car and adjusts the steering output to keep the car's tyres straight. I've never used a gyro before and I'm going to have to use it for the first time now at the airfield, um, so what could go wrong? This time I was keen to run the car with enclosed wheels, but as it turned out there wasn't enough room for the front wheels without them rubbing, so I had to cut out the arches. As the previous polycarbonate rear fins had worked so well last time up to 100 miles an hour, I decided not to change the design of these, only improving their stiffness slightly with some custom 3D printed brackets. All that I needed to do after fitting the new wing was to put everything together, fuel up the car and run the engine to check that it still worked. 
now I had a slightly improved version of the old car. Would these modifications actually be better though? Or would it turn out that I changed too much? Well, you'll see in a few minutes. Before I show you what happened at the event, it's time for a very quick ad from the sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. Often I'm too busy to be learning new recipes, but I've been enjoying using HelloFresh, following their recipes for meals, just like I'd follow instructions for building an RC car or some other kit of some description. What's especially cool with HelloFresh is that you can customize their boxes to suit your needs. Hello Custom allows you to customize your box by swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrading it for a more luxe experience, or adding protein to a vegetarian meal. That means more choices, more variety, and more meals truly tailored to you. You can follow foolproof step-by-step -step recipes that make for a joyful cooking experience and a stress-free summer. You can also update your delivery address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination or holiday destination with just one click. You can skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up the last of the summer sun. HelloFresh won't get in the way of a busy day either. So go to hellofresh.com and use the code PROJECTAIR16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Thank you very much to HelloFresh and now time for some testing. <laughs> right, let's go. Let's not crash into anyone. So I found myself at the huge expanse of tarmac at the UK's biggest RC speed event on what was to be a scorching hot weekend. It's quite a lot of tarmac this isn't it? <laughs> Look at that, it goes on for miles. We're here at Rossa, it's uh, a lovely morning, I thought it was going to be really windy but it's not, it's very still, uh, perfect for doing some speed runs. We've got about 1.6 miles of tarmac here so I think we've got enough space. It's a bit wider than last time so <laughs> hopefully we won't have another repeat of uh, the events at the other yeah. racing circuit we were at. Something of course might go wrong because it always does. We're going to be pushing this car to the limit and we'll see what breaks first. That's my approach to engineering, hope you appreciate that. Most cars were electric powered, with plenty being electric versions of the Armour Limitless car I started with. There are also a few fuel powered vehicles like this Nitro car. Only a handful of cars were completely custom, but these were definitely my favourite. This one got me thinking about how I could take my slap together prototype to the next level by building a long, low custom car that integrates the engine into the chassis. I was surprised to find out that no one I spoke to at the event was running a gyro. Was this a bad sign? I should probably have, have thought something of this at the time. With the temperature already very hot for the morning, something I'm not really used to in the UK, I did my best to prep the car and get it ready for the day ahead. Um, what happens if it flames out up there? This was the first time that the car had moved under its own power since the big crash. So I wanted to check that it ran it in a straight line and could stop as expected. I kept the body off so that I could access the internals much easier easier, as one extremely annoying thing I found with this car over my time testing it is that it's actually extremely inconvenient to have to take the engine off every time I want to refuel or get to the electronics within the car. The electric cars seem much easier to mess around with and get set up right. Next up it was time for a slow speed test run of the car on the main straight. So I fitted the body shell and got into the queue and waited for the tower to be free, which is where you control the car from. As I was waiting though, I was told by some of the others that it was too dangerous for me to run the car with the body as it was. Just making some drastic last minute, uh, last minute uh, changes. Oh. Oh. As I was saying, I'm making some last minute changes because I've been advised that the skirts are a bit dangerous on the, uh, the car. So I'm going to trim them down a bit. Uh, and yeah, basically this will mean that the the body will be less inclined to be sucked up towards the wheels. Lots of people said about, you know, you should cover your wheels with wheel arches, and so I, I left them like this, as, uh, <laughs> as uh, shown earlier. But the problem with that is that if the body gets sucked in on them, it could blow the tyre up, so I'm going to trim them out for safety, and uh, yeah, I think maybe the body is something I can, I can take away already as something that I need to, to work on. Right. Time for the first test run. This wasn't meant to be a high speed run with just 50 miles an hour through the timing equipment being my goal. I just wanted to check that the car felt similar to the last time out. Would it be easy to control in a straight line? Would the gyro overcompensate and cause an oscillation? Would other changes cause the car to behave differently to before? Woo, okay, it's go time. <laughs> Only gonna go slowly this time. Three, two, one. Perfect. 
Yeah, well done. Perfect. Straight, beautiful. Let's get on the skateboard. It went well, but I need to go and check it out. Okay. That's what I was. That's exactly what I was aiming for. <laughs> I was aiming for 50. <laughs> well, slightly short actually. But. Yeah. So the car seems absolutely fine, no problems whatsoever. But I'd have to give it the beans if I was to compete with the likes of some of these conventional electric cars. <laughs> Some of them, like this one of Kevin Talbot's, had some of the largest brushless motors I've ever seen, with some ridiculous cell counts. We might put two of this in there, that was the original plan. Right. Was well, to get another one of these and put it there, and another two of these and have it there. 12S on that side, 12S on that side. Now, instead, we're gonna put an MGM in there and do a 15S. Nice. On one motor. With it my turn again to climb the tower, I got the car set up further down the runway and fired up the engine. I hadn't changed anything on the car between these two runs. This time though, I wanted to aim for 100 miles an hour to get my speed up to where it was on the previous test day. I'll tell you what though, it was so unpleasantly hot on this tarmac by this point. So after five minutes of starting the car up, checking everything and trying not to pass out from the heat, maybe I'm being a bit dramatic there, I rushed back to the tower. I was pretty confident. The car was well trimmed, it was already proven at the speed I was aiming for and all I had to do was keep it in a straight line. What could go wrong? Well, you're about to see. Going for run now. As the car crossed through the timing gates, it oscillated violently from side to side. Applying the brakes, the car started to slow and I got it under control, but then... The car was in bits, again. It's fixable. So, yeah, thankfully we didn't get any fire, which was a bit, a bit worrying, but... Oh well, we got into a bit of a speed oscillation there. Unfortunately, only got to 77 miles an hour, I think, which is rubbish. Very rubbish. As I assessed the damage, theories about what caused the crash started to circulate. I think it might have been the gyro. No, it's that. It's flapping around, it's horrible. We have to get rid of it. And then I'll probably, if you're gonna run again today, Oh, I can't, I can't run again. All right. It seemed okay on the previous day. Yeah, but it's just a little bit of gust from the side. I could actually see it when you ran. Yeah, you can actually see that thing is dominating the car instead of just planting it. I wasn't so sure about this particular theory. The fins were one of the elements that was hardly changed from the last time out. If anything, they were stronger than previously. The car was traveling hardly above 70 miles an hour when this rapid oscillation started, so it seemed a bit odd to me that the others were so convinced it was the fins to blame. The body is actually all right. Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> to me, it seemed like the gyro had overcompensated, but I decided I'd have to do an investigation to test my theory using the scientific method. However, before I could run some experiments, some startling new evidence came to light which proved that neither the fins or the gyro were to blame for what happened at the end of the run. Now I've had a chance to look at the footage on my computer, I can tell that there was actually a completely separate problem which actually caused the crash. Here you can hear the car throttle up just before it went into the dirt, which suggests that a loss of signal and an incorrectly set failsafe were to blame. Checking the transmitter, I found that the failsafe was indeed reversed. This meant that instead of cutting the throttle, the engine went full throttle, accelerating the uncontrolled car straight to the scene of the accident. Why did I make this huge fatal mistake? Well, I think it might have been due to making last minute changes to the radio just before the run, while being slightly delirious from the intense heat of the runway. Next time, I need to be more careful as this is really a pretty dangerous error to make. Okay, so a loss of signal can be blamed for the actual crash, but what about that ginormous speed wobble? Assessing the footage, it doesn't look like the fins of the car are distorting at all, which adds some evidence to my theory about the gyro being to blame for this rapid speed wobble. But how could I find out for sure? My idea was to rebuild the car with its original electric motor, using the old parts from the original car. This would mean that I could run some tests with the car at speed, with and without the gyro, and with and without the fins, to do a logical process of elimination. Before taking this car out again though, I noticed some evidence that might be key. As I revved up the car statically with the wheels on, the gyro started to freak out all over the place. 
With the gyro disconnected, this didn't happen, of course. To see what the effect was at speed, I took the car out with the rebuilt wing attached and went up and down this road with the gyro turned on. And yep, there was that speed wiggle. Now I turned the gyro off and repeated the test, and the car was much more stable. The next day I returned with the car minus its fins. I reran the test both with the gyro active and the gyro deactivated, and the car seemed quite unstable and was difficult to keep in a straight line in both scenarios. This seems pretty good evidence that the wings were actually doing quite a good job of keeping the car stable. I think the reason for the gyro freakout was due to the sloppiness of the steering. This has developed after many, many crashes, and sadly, I think it might be time to retire this car. But maybe I can make a start on building something brand new. I think this whole project is a good example of my whole take on DIY engineering. It's about building new ideas that you can test and experiment with and push to the absolute limit. This project sort of failed in the end, but it taught me a heck of a lot. I knew almost nothing about speed cars before going into this whole jet car project, but now I feel like I can build something a lot more practical, a lot more streamlined, and of course, much faster. Right, while I get started on building something new, here's another video for you to check out. Um, I think you'll enjoy that one too. So have a watch, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.